Hello and welcome to week 9. Week 9 is all about animated USD for the first part. And then we're going to go on to really something that's not quite there yet, but is becoming more there every day, which is building a Bifrost bridge with USD. So we're building a bridge from Bifrost to a game engine with USD. We've been doing that for the last nine weeks, one way or another. The only, exa the only exemption there is probably the sprites we did in week five and six for the explosions and things, the volume stuff, uh, VDB importer. That wasn't through USD, but now, I today, I want to show you how to animate with USD and bring it into a game engine. So let's get started on that. I'm going to open Monster Animation, which you will have in your folder. And Monster Animation looks like this. Ying Ying's been wonderful and has exported an animation for us. And this is all that this guy does. He's just bend and bend. Monster Aerobics. If we take a look in week nine, if you look in the folder, you see there's monsteranimation.usda and the file that I've opened, which is monsteranimation.ma. So we have prepared an animated file for you. So let's get that loaded in and see it and get it working. Same way we've been doing it before. So I'm going to start a new, new Bifrost graph. I'm going to create a graph. Define USD reference from file. So this is a new one. So what we're going to do here is load the USD file, that the already animated USD file. And there it is. So that's not really going to help us much at the moment. So let's let's get that looking right. So let's put down a scope. So we can use this as a group. And we'll call this prototype one. And the reference definition goes into the reference definitions there. And I think pretty much at this point we can create a stage. Add to stage, just so we can take a look at it before we do anything else. And then I need an output. And there we go. So now you can see this is an animated USD file. We have 60 frames of animation and there it is. So I'm not going to take you through how to make the animation. Uh, this is not really an animation course. It's a Bifrost course, but I believe Ying Ying's method was to rig it and output it. That file is in the folder for you. So feel free to dig through that yourself. And so what we're going to do really, really quickly here is make a group of dancing monsters. Yeah. So for that, we're going to need this guy a few more times, but offset. So we want to, we want to maybe have them moving at different rates or different monsters moving at different speeds and all that kind of thing. You know, it's uh, how it goes. So let's make a second one. Let's just copy this. We're going to use reference from file again. We'll just use the same one with the same file. I'll we'll pop that guy in there and we'll just change its name to prototype two. Like that. And then this time we're going to set our layer offset to 40. So I'm just going to make a new transform. Offset, and then I'll make another one that I'm going to call zeroed, just just for fun. And what we'll do is we'll put prototype one into zeroed. We'll put prototype two into offset. So what we're going to do is we're going to scatter. We're going to make a point instancer out of this guy and have two different two different monsters which we've got here. Okay, so let's make a plane. Just a simple everyday mesh plane that doesn't need to be connected to those. And I'm just going to throw down a terminal so we can see what we're doing. It's going to throw down a terminal so we can see what we're doing. There's a plane. It's not a very big plane right now. Let's make that 25 by 25. And we don't need that many segments. And then we'll do a quick scatter. We're just going to scatter, oh, I don't know, not that many. Let's scatter 15, nah, 25. Let's get a 25 of these guys, and then we're going to randomize the point scale like that. I'm basically just going to make a random array that is the same size as this guy. So I'll get the point count. So I'm going to make a random array that is the same size as this guy that basically will give me a zero or a one. For that, we need a random value. And 
this needs to become a sequence array. That these guys need to be longs. And we go from zero to two. Oops, sorry. Step one, this is where we go from zero to two. We'll just make this long as well. And then we plug the sequence into the index. This will give us a random value that is either zero or one. And then we'll do define a point instancer. So here's our USD point inst instancer. And there's our points. And then I'm going to use these guys as my instance ID override. So that just means that we're going to have an ID one or an ID zero. And then prototype one will pop into prototype definitions. And then I better hook that back up. Prototype two, where we'll put in there as well. And then we can just bring this along. And we'll just pop that in there and see what we get. So there we go. Now I have a feeling this is only the first prototype. And I had my reference definition plugged into my children. So now we have both of our prototypes showing up in our instancer. Let's just change that scale a bit because they're a little bit big. So let's just go to 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. And maybe a bit bigger, 0 0.8 to 1.25. There we go. So we've got some big ones and some little ones. And then we're going to Let's see what happens when we press play. So you could see the frame offset happening there. So not all of them started until frame 40. So let's change that offset just a little bit. And remember that's in here with the layer offset. Let's take that down to 10. Play that again. There we go. Give this a few more frames. Like this. That way we can have much more of an offset, which is 20 is fine. We'll just play that back. And you get them doing their thing. Awesome. So last thing we want to do is maybe let's differentiate between prototype one and prototype two somehow. Yeah. So the way we do that is after we've added to the stage, we put in another add to stage. Like this. And we just want to make a find usd prim find usd prim needs to be set to over and we're doing the same as we did to change the color last time let's make a display color like this and what's happening right now is they're all the same color because create default material is on if i turn that off we're going to get back to the colors that we had on the button on the file that came in. So this guy is, is bluish green, but we want to override that color to more of a pinky color. So let's just go in here. I'll do it manually. Go 1, 0 0.8, 0 0.6. So just a sort of a pinky yellowy color. And we need to tell it what we're overriding. We need to find the path of prototype two, which is offset proto. It's that guy there. And we can do that like we've been doing. Go in here, go to the metadata, grab that guy, back to Bifrost, and let's just pop that in there. Like so, and then we can drop this in here and then backpack that stage out. My bad, we only wanted to do the bodies, right? So. We need to tell it body as well. Now you can see they've changed color. And so that's basically how you would use an animated file in USD. Which leads us on to the next use for it.